Hello there and welcome back to another episode of our Lumina Neo Academy. The show where we help you to get the most out of this photo editing application. Now, if you've never been here before, my name is Jacob Bors and I'm a creator and founder here at Clever Photographer. Now, before we're going to start, I have a few things I want to cover. First of all, at the end of the video, I'm going to give you access to our popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet. So you make sure that you stay until the end. Also, if you don't own Luminar Neo or the HDR Merge plugin, get our discount code to get the best possible price and you can find it in the description of this video. Finally, I would like to ask you to please like, comment and share on this video. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. In today's tutorial, I will show you how to use the popular Magic Light AI extension in Luminar Neo. I will explain you how to add it into Luminar Neo and then look at all the available sliders in this tool to ensure you get the most out of it. After that, we will look at the real examples and cover the tool's additional options. Before we're going to start, I want to mention that our brand new Luminar Neo Winter Bundle powers this tutorial and is now available on our website. To find out more about it, follow the link in the description or visit our website cleverphotographer.com. So first, let's talk about what is Magic Light AI extension. The Magic Light AI is the seventh extension introduced by Skylum for their photo editing software Luminar Neo. This highly anticipated extension uses its AI features to scan through the image and add additional light effects to artificial light sources like street lights, car lights, candles, fairy lights, Christmas trees, and many others. The light effect added by the extension creates a star-like effect with extra light beams and additional glow following the color of the light source. The light beams and glow can be individually adjusted with the powerful yet simple sliders in the tool. Advanced users will appreciate the possibility of masking and layer editing with this tool which gives you the additional options on how it can be used. To finish it off, the Magic Light AI can be used with both standalone and plug-in version of Luminar Neo. Now the Magic Light AI is a professional paid extension for Luminar Neo. Currently, there are three ways to get it. You can purchase it as an individual extension, or you can purchase it as a part of the Extension Pack 2022, or you can also get it as a part of your professional Luminar Neo subscription. If you want to see how to subscribe, how to purchase the extension pack or the individual extension, you can follow the links in the description of this video. Okay, so before we can use the extension, we need to install it. And to do that, you just need to have your Luminar Neo open and being logged in with your profile. After that, move to the catalog module and navigate to the top right corner of your screen. There you should see the extension button with the orange puzzle on it. Simply click on it and it will open the extension window. Here at this point you should see seven different extensions and when you scroll down you will see that the last one available at the moment is the magic light. I already have it installed, however what you need to do is to just click on installation here, it only takes a few seconds and the extension will be available. It works the same way for all the other extensions and once you finish here you just click on the little red button and we can continue. To start with we're going to be looking at all the different sliders available with this tool. Now if you want to follow me along and use some of these examples make sure you head into the description of this video and just follow the link there. To start we're going to use this simple example with the three candles. So just click on it to select it and then move it into edit module by clicking on the edit on the top of your screen. Once you're in the edit module, navigate your attention towards the main toolbar and specifically the extension section. Here you should see the magic light extension and all you need to do is to click on it to open it. Now as you can see we have a list of sliders here and we're gonna go through each one of them to understand what they do. 
the first slider called the intensity is the first stop when you're going to be using this extension. This slider controls the overall intensity of the magic light AI effect. When it's at zero, you can see on the image, we see no effect at all. So when you open the tool or extension, you're going to go first into the intensity and increase the slider there. You can see that as I start to pull it up, you will see the effect starting to appear. When I go all the way, it's really strong and defined. When I go in the middle, it's kind of halfway through. And then I can again switch off the tool completely by bringing the intensity to zero. So let's go ahead and really push the slider somewhere around 80 and look at the image. So looking at it, you can see once again, we have a three sources of light, which are those candles and the magic light AI automatically creates the beams and the glow around them. So that's the intensity slider. After that, we have the size slider. As the name itself says it, the size slider changes the size of all the beams and glow. By default, it's on 30. And when we bring it down, again, we can almost switch off the effect. You can still see it a little bit. And if you want to switch it off completely, you would have to go back to the intensity slider and bring it to zero. However, with the size, you can almost make it invisible. On the opposite, when you push it the other way around, you can really make it really, really big. So let's just bring it down. Don't forget that when you double click on any of the sliders, they will reset to their original value. So that's the size slider. Now the third slider is called the beam width. With this slider, you can adjust the width of the light beam. Remember, the magic light effect is created by beams and a glow. So with the beam width, when we bring it to zero, the beams completely disappear. And when you really push it up, you will see how dominant they are. You can push it all the way where they almost become like additional glow. Again, when we reset it, it goes back to 30. After the beam width, we're going to go to the glow. The glow slider adjusts the amount of glow around each light. So as you can see, starting point is 30. When we bring it down, it almost completely removes the glow. When we bring it up, it can be really, really strong. The next slider is called clearness. With this slider, you can control how defined the individual beams are. Now, by default, it's on 30. And when we bring it down, the beams almost disappear. They become so blurry that it's almost an additional glow. When I push this slider on the other way, the other side, you will see that the beams are really, really defined. Again, when we reset it to 30, it's a starting point and we can move to the next slider. The next slider is the brightness. Now the brightness slider adjusts the brightness of the glow and the beam in each light. So it's really simple. We can bring it down and make the overall effect darker, or we can bring it the other way around and make the effect really bright. By default, it's on 50. So let's leave it there and move to the last two sliders. Now the next slider is called number of beams. So this is really self-explanatory. Looking at it, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven beams. You can bring it down to two or you can push it all the way to 24. Now by default, it's on seven and it's looking pretty good. And the last slider in this tool is called rotation. And as you guessed it, you can use it to rotate the individual beams around. So when I push it, I can move them very slowly, right to left or left to right. Again, by default, this slider is on 50. Now, before we going to finish here and move to some of the real life examples, I have two more things I want to show you. First one is the use of masking together with the magic light AI. So let's just reset the tool and bring the intensity up. Now I don't want it that big, I want it a little bit smaller. And let's say that I want this effect to be only applied to one of the candles. So let's say I just want this effect to be on this one. It's not the greatest example for this situation, but it will help you to understand for future projects. So I want the effect to be applied only to this candle. Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to the tool, click on masking, and let's say that we're gonna use the brush. So select the brush, and here, select the erase. We want to erase part of the effect. 
adjust the size, we can remove the softness a little bit and leave the strength on 100. Now, very carefully, just paint over the other candles. So one and two. And by doing that, you will see that the effect disappears from those two candles and we only have it on the one here. So that's the first thing. We can use the masking to remove the effect from certain parts of the image. So now let's go back to the adjustments. And if we want, we can push the intensity. We can play around with the band width, add the glow, all just for this one candle. So that brings us to the second thing where I want to show you how we can apply the Magic Light AI in different variation to different parts of the image. So at this moment, we have the Magic Light AI effect on this candle. When I close it, it will get applied to the image. And now I can open the tool again. And by increasing the intensity, you will see that it will start to appear everywhere, including our first candle. So we don't want that. We just want to go into the masking brush, erase, again, adjust the size, smaller softness, and let's just paint this candle away. So that way we are now affecting only those two candles. So now what we could do, we could go back to the adjustments and let's say that we want even more glow on those two, less beam, smaller size. So let's say really small and maybe more beams there and more rotation. So now, as you can see, we are controlling two sets of the effect. When I close it and apply it to the image and go into the edit section, we have a two sets of tools here. The first one where we controlling the first candle and the second one where we controlling the other two candles. So what did you learn today? We had a look at the Magic Light AI extension and describe all the different sliders. Then we had a look at the masking and a way of how you can apply the effect to only certain parts of your image. And we also look at the way of how you can use different variation of the Magic Light AI effect around the same photo. Now, before we're going to leave, I wanted to make sure that you see the effect on some real life examples, not just on the three candles. I'm going to do it quite fast and don't worry, we will make further tutorials on our YouTube channel. So just so you have the idea on what you can do. So let's start with this lady with the candle. I just select it and move it into edit module. My idea for this is to make sure that we add glow to the candle without any additional beams. For this, we're going to jump into our magic light AI. And as always, we're going to start by increasing the intensity slider. Let's go quite high on this one. Then we go into the size, make it even bigger. And this time, as we don't want any of the beams, we're going to bring the beam width all the way down. After that, we're going to move into the glow and we're going to increase the glow a lot. So you can start to see it. with the clearness. Let's see when we make it a little bit higher, the glow actually disappear. So we want to bring it down to somewhere around 20 with the brightness. Let's have a look when we bring it up. It actually helps a bit. So we leave it around 80. There are no beams after this. So let's quickly just have a look at the before and after. And I think it's quite cool. The second example is this very lovely scene. It's kind of evening blue hour time, lots of snow and the line of street light. So let's go back into the magic light AI, open it and again, start by increasing the intensity slider. What I really like here is that it start to apply it immediately everywhere, starting from the first one and following the line. I think the intensity is a little bit too strong. So let's stay somewhere around 50 or 55. And then with the size, let's see, we want it maybe a little bit stronger. With the beam width, do we want it just maybe down a little bit around 23? With the glow, I would add a little bit of a glow. And with the clearness, yeah, maybe just somewhere around 20. Let's quickly look at the before and after. And I think it's looking quite cool. What I really like is that the effect also copies the color of the source of light. So that way we can really adjust different sources of lights regardless of their color. And finally, the Christmas tree with the fairy lights on it provide us with one of the coolest examples on what this tool can be used on. So let's quickly jump into Magic Light AI and increase the intensity here. 
you will see how we start to get this really lovely effect across the different Christmas baubles. We can adjust the size again, make it bigger or smaller, play around with the width, add more glow, maybe a little bit less clearness and more brightness. Once we're done with it, we can check the before and after. And I really think that the magic light AI effect will work very well on all sorts of festive and Christmas captures. And there you have it. If you want a copy of our popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet, there is nothing easier than heading to our website cleverphotographer.com slash Luminar gift. While you're there, you can also check out one of our popular Luminar Neo products, or you can stay here and watch more videos about Luminar Neo. For today, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please make sure that you like, comment and share on this video. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. For today, thank you very much for watching. My name is Jacob Bors and I can't wait to see you in the next video.